Simpson haters, it's Robin May Daly, and today we're going to be talking about goals, because somehow it's 2021. The apocalypse is here, the world is still burning, so let's get the most out of that experience. This video and advice will be geared towards authors, but it is really applicable to anyone. As a workaholic who feels my self-worth is intrinsically linked to my productivity, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to get the most out of every second of life. So after spending a lot of time thinking about this, here are some systems that I recommend, who they might work for, what they might help you achieve, and just keep in mind that your mileage may vary, especially if you have any sort of neurodivergency really. If you have ADHD or autism, certain systems are going to work better for you. I am still on the hunt for the perfect productivity system that is inclusive, intersectional, and written for people with ADHD. I very well may end up just writing the book myself. But that's a few years down the line. So let's start with the very, very basics. Just grab a pen and paper, a notepad app, whatever. Before you can start working towards your goals, you have to figure out what they are. Maybe you have specific goals in mind that you really want to achieve. Maybe you just have a sense that something in your life is causing you displeasure. Maybe there's just a general veil of unhappiness that you feel you can help remedy with achievements. If it's unclear to you now what you want to work towards, but you do sense that there is something you want to change, there are various systems that exist that can help you diagnose that change. Some of those systems include a life audit, the level 10 life method. There are systems that help you look at your values or the things that you do that make you happy. Level 10 life was developed by a guy called Hal Elrod who wrote Miracle Morning, which you've probably heard of. I'm personally not a fan because I don't like waking up at any time. But there are some useful things that can be taken from level 10 life, especially if you're a person who feels you want change but doesn't exactly know where. I recommend just giving it a Google, looking at the categories and thinking about each of those areas of your life and what level 10 would look like. Some examples would be your friendship might feel at a level 3 at the moment, but you could put it up to a level 10 by having more frequent phone calls with your friends. The categories of level 10 life are, and excuse me because I'm going to read this, health and fitness, physical environment, giving and or contributions, fun and recreation, marriage or relationship, career, finances, spiritual, personal development, and family and friends. Obviously you can tweak those as they're applicable if you don't have a relationship or you don't want a relationship. Just get rid of the category. Alternatively, if you're in a poly relationship, maybe you want to create a little category for each of those. Maybe you want to include specific hobbies. If you're an author, you probably want to start, maintain, or build a writing habit. So you could just have writing as a whole category, and then in that have subcategories. Those things would be like the actual craft of writing, marketing, relationships with beta readers and critique partners, or financials in that area if you're doing this to become a full-time writer. Maybe level 10 life is too much, too many categories, pare them down into whatever it is you're doing. As 10 categories may seem daunting, there are many areas in which you can find unhappiness, and in that unhappiness you will find your goal. Alternatively, you could do a life audit. For me, that usually includes walking around my house and looking at all the things that make me go, Ugh, maybe it's my wardrobe, I want it to be more cohesive. Maybe it's the food in your fridge, you want to eat healthier. Maybe it's the things you've already done that day or haven't done. Do you want to build a yoga practice? Do you want to be spending your time more intentionally? Have you been working all day or all week and keep promising yourself a day off and a self-care day and you still haven't done it? That's something to work towards. It's okay slash mandatory to set your health and your self-care and recreation as goals and habits that you work towards. Personally, I find fantasizing about different life very mm, guiding. Wherever you find yourself wishing that something was different, you can find a goal or a habit you want to build. Those things are attainable, you just have to do some stuff. If you've spent any time thinking about goal setting or googled it once, you've already come across smart goals. What I find the most important out of that is the specific. In the context of authorship, maybe you want to hit a certain page count, hit a certain word count, have a certain amount of followers, finish a manuscript, finish first draft, get this many critique partners or beta readers set up. Be specific. Set a number to the thing you want, it usually helps. Don't just say, get some critique partners, say, I want three critique partners. If you've set a goal like 
finish a whole manuscript, that is going to seem really unmanageable. It's a nice thing to like put on a vision board, but it's not immediately actionable, so we don't want that wherever your goals are going. Wherever you're tracking those goals, write down something like finish the first chapter, finish the first act, finish this many pages, this many words. I'll talk about this in a different video, probably in a NaNoWriMo video. But the page count or the word count isn't really the thing you should be focusing on. Focus on finishing the story, finishing this scene, finishing the next scene, finishing the act. That's all for another day. This is where you also want to avoid the pitfall of just setting yourself generic goals that the public seem to want. Like, be more healthy. You don't actually have to set a goal to be more healthy. If you want to focus on something else, it's perfectly fine to just maintain the level of health you are currently at. Now maybe you're hearing me talk about goals and thinking that the things that I want don't fall under that structure. I want something and then I want it again and again and again. Reading every day or remembering to take my medication. Those are great habits to build. That's not a goal, that's a habit. They're slightly different. Arguably, habits are more valuable. Because you get a goal and then it's done and then what do you do? You move on to the next one. If you're working in this space of goal setting at the moment and you're researching how to set my goals for 2021, I would be shocked if you haven't already heard of Atomic Habit. Go read it, it's very helpful. The basic premise is to build habits, start ridiculously small. Start atomically small. Right one word a day and that will grow. I'm not just going to rehash someone else's book. Go read it, go to the library, get it out. You'll have a great time, you'll have a great time. The third alternative that I'll give you to goal setting and habits are yearly themes. The yearly theme system was developed by Mike Hurley and CGP Grey and I will link to the latest yearly theme video. So how are we going to track our habits, goals or themes? Going for the yearly theme method after exploring those videos you can get the theme system journal if there are any left. I haven't checked. I got one in beta. Ooh -hoo -hoo. You don't need the theme system journal though to track your yearly theme. You can use any other journal. Everything is interchangeable. Personally, I like to use a mix of digital and paper. I'm going to show you my planner for this year. Isn't it beautiful? It is from Chasing Planner Peace. It is fully customizable. For me, I have my 2021 goals. Oh, don't make them a secret, not really doesn't have to be pretty. doesn't have to be pretty. Month at a glance. I'm not ever going to do a plan with me video because I don't make nice bullet journals anymore. The benefits of having paper planner are it feels nice to write in. It is a more enjoyable habit to build for me. It's not the most streamlined. It does take time. Time that I spend working in that planner is also self-care time for me since having my shit together and knowing what I'm going to expect each day makes me relaxed. <laughs> Cannot find my Bujo, but what I did find was the yearly theme journal, which I didn't end up using, which is very sad. Ironically, the theme I set for myself in this journal was persistence, and then I didn't do it. To be fair, 2020 happened. <laughs> I started a book though, and I've persisted with that so much that I'm here doing this. I'm trying desperately to avoid becoming one of those people who are like, here's how I organized my life in my 14 different planners. Bitch, you don't have a life. You have a planner habit. Migos, great company. They make lovely journals. This is their goals journal. Again, I bought it and then didn't fill it out because I bought it at the end of 2019. I was really anxious to start filling this out because really what it wants you to have is like a five year, 10 year plan. If you've got one of those, that's great, and I highly recommend a Migol's Goal Journal. Otherwise, their Progress Journal, which is a daily view journal, goes for 90 days. I recommend to anyone. You can just track your progress over that time, and it feels really good to think, I've spent my time intentionally every day over these 90 days. Another thing that I use is a Life Binder, which is this, which I may end up throwing out because the cat pissed on it. It basically has checklists that I need, anything I'm going to refer back to, long-term plans, uh, goal breakdowns. The checklists are the thing that I use the most in this. Checklists for traveling, checklists for cleaning, checklists for job interview, anything like that. Put it in here. Sort of combine this with a getting things done method where I use this as an inbox too. Just a blank empty display sheet in the back of this where I will shove in notes of things that I need to do or things that I want to remember to do later and then go through it all and 
action things as they need to be done. I don't recommend anyone read Getting Things Done. It's really boring. Look at a flowchart and then go, yeah, that's a good idea, and just implement that. You don't need to read the book. If you want to go into the digital side of things, I wouldn't recommend you get as obsessive as, say, I have got with those journals. Honestly, all you need, literally all I want to recommend that you do right now is use your notes app, your reminder app, and if you're going analog, just a bit of paper. And all you do every day is write down what are you going to do today. Make sure within that list of shit you're going to do that at some point you are working towards one of those goals. Try to get the things on those to-do lists done and then once you've done that for a month or two then you can start looking at things like Notion or OmniFocus or Roam or Wiki. Until then you stay away from it because all you're going to do is build a habit of tinkering with apps. There is a learning curve with programs like that. Even something like Habit RPG, which is very useful, and I do recommend, but just to begin with, notes, reminders, pen and paper, all you need. Honestly, if you don't think you need to be reminded, just use the notes. Another way to remind yourself of those goals, instead of using the reminders app, write them in your phone into the notes app, and then just set them as your background. If you want to get graphic design -y with it, you can make it cute. I've done that on my iPad, I've done that for a while on my phone. I've even tried making calendars in Photoshop and setting them as my background on the Mac. So from here, it's basically rinse and repeat. So you've got those goals, break them down into the time frame, because they should have a time frame of when you want to achieve them. If it's a goal you want to achieve by the end of the year, separate it into seasonal or quarterly goals, monthly, weekly, daily. And try to be realistic with yourself about how long it's going to take you to achieve that. So with a deadline, you should set a deadline for everything. But on the other hand, don't make it impossible to achieve. This is a process where you will need to learn to grant yourself grace. Forgive yourself and move on. There's no point in dwelling over the fact that you failed. And it's okay to fail. If I thought it wasn't okay to fail, I'd still be working towards goals that I put in this or the other books that I don't actually want anymore. Maybe you get a month into it or even a week into working towards the thing you thought you want and think, eh, is it really worth it? Things worth getting usually require hard work. The feeling of I'm not enjoying the work that is getting me towards the thing that I want isn't the feeling to be avoided or used as a barometer. Instead, if you're feeling like it's not worth it, if you're feeling like the end goal isn't worth it, let it go that is fine. Fuck sunk cost fallacy, cut your losses, get out of there. Get on to the next thing. In the context of authorship, maybe you start writing a book. You get halfway through and you think, wow, this is really bad. I don't like this. No good. Feel free to dump it. Don't sink any more time. If you're not enjoying the writing process, it's probably not going to be a very good book. Salvage what you can from that experience and move on to the next thing. If your schedule is restrictive in a way that means you cannot work towards these things every day, set aside the time that you can. If you have a job that is just your day job, or you're going to school and you want to work towards something other than that degree, or you are a full-time caretaker, you need to set aside the time for yourself to work towards the other goals you have in your life. You also need to set aside the time for recreation and relaxation and basic self-care, like washing your ass. Because if you don't do that, you're going to burn out. I don't need to explain to you why you need to wash your ass. With time management, clear idea of what you want and why you want it, and a habit of writing to-do lists every day, you can start to work towards those things. And in two months, we can talk again about more refined systems you can use to get the things that you want. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope you go and look at some of these tools that I've given you. I would love it if you could share them with me. Goal setting isn't for everyone, but I'm a little productivity rat. So if you have goals, please share them with me. I want to talk about them. I want to talk about methods. I want to talk about time management. I want to talk about productivity. Anyway, I can't wait to see you smash it in 2021 because it can't get any worse, right? Right?